Virginia School District Number 95 Board of Education for Monday, August the 8th. Let the record show all members are present. The voting sequence for this meeting is as follows. Bailey, Furnish, Asler, Isaac, Tunnel, Arbuckle, and Davis. Audience to visitors. Uh, um, the Association of Parish Teachers has a statement I provided all the board members. Um, um, uh, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, so I butcher it right in front of you. All right. Um, says the District 95 educational staff is dedicated to providing the best possible education for parish students. To that, we wish to express several concerns that we feel have a definite impact on the quality of our students' education. Um, we are concerned that with only one week until the start of school this school year, multiple educational positions with direct student contact have yet to be filled due to the potential lack of funding. These include Title I, Reading Grant, and a reinstatement of a sixth kindergarten section. At the same time, positions are being created or redefined for, for retired administrators with undefined job descriptions. Given the current limitations on funding for school personnel, we respectfully request that the Board of Education mindfully consider the use of funds for staff that have a direct impact on our students' education. And, and we're also extremely concerned that our, that our primary source of information seems to be a community-wide hearsay. To alleviate this situation, we propose that a communications committee of staff administrators, board members, it is our belief that we're all here for the same goal which is the best education of students. Uh, we don't expect a response from you. Um, one thing I will say, you know, if you want more detail, I guess you could meet with us sometime, or me or some of the staff. So thank you for your time. We, we appreciate your concern, okay. and we will discuss it. All right, thank, thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? If not, um, consent agenda. In your package, you have a listing of the bills and the treasury report. Does anyone have any questions this afternoon? Yeah. I think it's a deal. They do call for the order to be required so that the chairs will do. They require a little clamp that goes on the bottom of all the chairs. No, we have tennis balls. They're not here. They haven't realized they were in other schools of pilots this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Any other questions? Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Haslund? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Our buckle? Yes. Dave, this is yes. Um, the secretary's report? Yeah, we got a thank you from uh, the Howard Furnish family. Uh, so thanks so much for your donation of $35 to Laker Stadium Fund in Howard's name. It's greatly appreciated. He did a lot of work out there. He's one of the main ones that did a lot of work. So he'll be missed. Yeah, sure will. Um, Superintendent's agenda? Yes, on the superintendent's agenda, the first item is uh, under resignations. We have a resignation we received from Adam Blossom. Uh, Adam was employed as an RTI interventionist at Wims and Mayo. He was a track coach at Mayo. Uh, Adam is a social studies teacher, and he's accepted a position in Avon, which will be greatly missed. But uh, I recommend that the board accept his resignation. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Hassler? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tuttle? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Also under resignations, we have received a letter of resignation from Dan Gates as the 8th grade basketball coach for the World Program. <coughs> and I would ask that the board accept his resignation from that position. Any discussion? Is he going to coach 7th grade? What's the deal with that? He has just resigned from the 8th grade position. Yes, he will continue to be the 7th grade school custom. He is still employed also at the high school at the co-op that's consistent with the class. Um, do we have a second? Okay. Uh, Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Hassler? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tom? Yes. 
Our buckle yeah. Okay, you see this. And the next item is our other appointments. Uh, I had recommended that the Board of Education hire Jessica Walker to serve as a secretary in the high school office of full time. She will serve as the attendant secretary. Jessica has subbed in our office for several years and with the resignation of Michelle Smith last year, she will be taking that position. Um, as you know, District 95 employs all of the non-certified personnel at the co-op and then we contract that position back because of the agreement that we entered into several years ago. So I would recommend that the board employ Jessica Walker as the secretary of PCHS. So, any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Asma? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tunnel? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Yes. Also under employment, you have a letter of recommendation from Mrs. Ogle to employ Jessica Blair as a one-on-one -on -one aide for special education student at Mayo. Jessica has already taken and passed the work workies test and she meets state requirements. So I would recommend that the board employ Jessica Blair. I got nervous. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Furnish? Yes. Ask yes. Isaac? Yes. Trouble? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Yeah. Davis? Yes. Also has included a recommendation from Mrs. Ogle to employ Verna Smith as a one-on-one -on -one student aide at Mayo. Uh, Verna has subbed as an aide for this student during the 2010-2011 school year. Verna also meets the state requirements for employment, so I would recommend that the board employ Verna Smith as a one-on-one -on -one student. Okay. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Hassan? Yes. Isaac? Tuttle? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Next is another employment. In your packet is a recommendation from Mr. Whitaker to employ Lisa McCullough as a one-on-one -on -one aide for a student at Memorial. Lisa filled this vacancy last year after the resignation of Jason Brewington and asked the board to approve the employment of Lisa McCullough as a one-on-one -on -one student paraprofessional for the 2011-2012 school year. Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yes. Burnish? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tom? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Another employment coming from Mrs. Ogle is requesting that the, uh, actually it comes from Mr. Sperry, uh, he has enclosed a recommendation for the employment of John Bolthouse to fill the seventh grade boys basketball vacancy. And he recommends, and I also recommend that the board approve that uh, recommendation to employ him as a seventh grade basketball coach. No, he is not a teacher. Is he a teacher? Oh, yeah, I want a teacher. Okay. Sorry, I didn't recognize the name. Also from Mayo, Mrs. Ogle is requesting that the Mayo course yeah. stipend would be the Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Bailey? Yes. Furnish? Yes. Hassel? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Tuttle? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Okay, now. Mrs. Ogle has requested that the Mayo course stipend that is listed in Schedule A be paid to Emily Miller Amato. Emily is the new course director at Mayo Middle School for the 2011-2012 school year. And the recommendation for the board is to approve that stipend of $352 to Emily Miller Amato. So, right. Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yeah. Furnish? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac? Yes. yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis is yes. Also included in your packet is the 2011-2012 handbook for the Creative Center for Children. Uh, the grant has been approved for the preschool for all programs for the coming year, and I would ask that the board approve that handbook for the Creative Center for the 11-12 school. <coughs> Any discussion? Have there been any changes to it? Have there been any changes to this? Since just, just cosmetic as far as I know. Just names and okay. dates. Okay. Uh, Bailey? Yes. Fringe? Yes. Hassel? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Under informational items, um, 
because of oh, oh, substitute. Okay. We also need to approve for the school year the 2011-2012 substitute list. Uh, as you're aware, they are updated throughout the year's time needed, but it is a annual thing that the board approves the substitute list of teachers for the coming school year. That would be my recommendation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? If not, uh, Bailey? Yeah. Furnish? Yes. Hassel? Yes. Isa? Yes. Uh, yes. Our level? Yes. Davis, yes. Okay, also in our informational items, uh, as you know, the first Monday of the month falls on Labor Day next month. I would like to request the board change the September board meeting to 4 p.m. on Monday, September 12th, um, and the following, preceding the cooperative high school board meeting at that time. So both would be on the 12th. The high school would be a 5, and the 95 would be a 4. Uh, the teachers' annual teachers' breakfast is coming up next Monday at 8:30, and I want to take this opportunity to invite all board members to welcome to come to that breakfast at 8:30, and that's at Lakewood Lake Ridge Christian Church. And one last final item: uh, we spoke with the Capital Development Board last week. They are still completing surveys of the projects that are eligible for funding through the building program. They believe that they will be finished sometime early this month with those, and then the money will be released from the governor's office sometime in the early fall, if not before. So that's the, the latest update we have on where we're at with receiving our funding for, funding for the high school project. And that is the end of the superintendent's agenda. Okay. Report of committees. Public hearing and petitions. Unfinished business. Matters for follow-up, new business, right to revert to prior order of business, executive session. I move that this Board of Education hold a closed meeting in order to consider information regarding appointment, employment, or dismissal of any employee or officer. So, Bailey? Yes. British? Yes. Hassler? Yes. Isaac? Tunnel? Yes. Arbuckle? Yes. Davis? Yes. Mm -hmm. Article 4 order of the record show that all members are present. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask for audience to visitors if there's anyone who would like to address the board at this time. Yes. I saw uh, work being done on the gym. What was done and what was the cost? The work on the gym was a that had right. been. Basically, the whole outer rim of that mm -hmm. field had ice, been, uh, ice damage. Mm -hmm. And then there was also a series of, that basically all the water had come out of the joints around where the boys' basketball is in the, in the block. When they got into it, they had to actually go in and replace the entire canopy around the top, and they put a new roof on that section, as well as finished out the ceiling around the pool in the back. But the total cost of that, I got right there. There you go. And that was sort of, there was more damage there than they originally estimated. Yes, there was and more damage. Some of that was uh, Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. You all have the consent agenda in the package. Is there any questions at this point? I had a couple questions on the road. Um, <clears throat> it looks like we spend about $3,600 on program. For reconditioning helmets and pads, it's something that we do every year. Um, you, have to, you have to have them not say, which is another way of saying nationally certified. We have to have them reconditioned every year and they'll be painted. Okay. The majority of that bill is for many programs. It looks like we spent an equal amount on bands, but it just says why. That goes anywhere between uh, repair to uh, instruments, 
it is, um, we bought a couple of instruments. Uh, I could get the actual purchase orders for you if you want no, to see I'm just curious. And we got to Yes. Those will be paid for through um, Eastern Illinois Area for Employment System. They are going to reimburse those for us. Uh, out of so we purchase them and they will reimburse us. I have a motion to approve the consideration. Remain seconded. Yes. Robert? Yes. Davis? Yes. 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 Secretary's report. No secretary's report this time. Administrative report. Okay. The first item on our administrative report is actually a board action. We have to have a bonded treasurer by state law. Have, to have that bond treasurer and the bond filed with the regional office of education in the month of August. At this time, I suggest that we will choose a treasurer to be bonded to represent the bond. Do we have anybody who talked to the advance? I am not. So we're looking for a volunteer for that. I was thinking it should be like the first time to see the Yeah, and he's already in the 95. I'm kind of upset. I'm already bonded. That's the double bond? Uh, yeah. But it might not be as much. It is. Yeah. So you have detail. Yeah. Can we be for both? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes, Davis. Abstain. Pass the motion. Yes, right? Yes. Order. Yes. Second item on the administrative report is for the board to consider continuing the catastrophic insurance coverage for our athletes. This is a cost that we incur every year to insure a catastrophic incident in any sport that goes above and beyond what our current coverage is, which is well covered, but it's always been suggested that we consider carrying this extra policy and cost the board right around nine hundred dollars to insure all of our athletes for the school year. And it has a rather high deductible of eighty five thousand dollars that will cover eight million dollars beyond that. So the board have to have seek those coverage. So it would be my recommendation that the board continue this coverage for the 2011-2012 school year. Yes. 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 Next item on the administrative report deals with meals here at American Walton High School. Um, one of the things that we've done in the past is try to survey folks on what they think we need to do to improve. And something that is brought up by students and staff on a regular basis is our meal program. Um, we receive complaints. Not, not, not overwhelming number of complaints, but kids are always saying we need more to eat. We like to have a little bit better variety. Our staff has brought it up and also brought up the idea that you know we have a lot of kids that come to school in the morning that don't eat breakfast, and that we could offer a, a breakfast in the morning. Uh, we, Mark and I, Mr. Cox and I, met with Darla Davidson, our food service coordinator, and talked about how we could improve our menu and try to keep the cost down as best we could. And she's come up with a plan to increase the uh, entree uh, by a small percentage, it's about five to 10 percent. And she's come up with a rotating menu that would take the, you know, we'd have the same menu, but it would rotate for three months. And the kids will have a chance on the first couple of days of school to give us uh, some survey information on what they would want. And we will build our menu around that. What we want to do is offer just a regular meal a, and a couple of sides that can be substituted, a, a deli choice like a, a, a wrap or a sandwich choice that would be another thing that they can choose. Or they can add on to the meal, but it cannot be at the free or reduced price. So those are things that we would like to consider going forward. Um, and we would like to have an official board vote on starting a school breakfast program. We would charge the same thing that is charged at Mayo Middle School, $1.25 for the full uh, 
for the full meal and 35 cent reduced cost for that. Will we incur costs above what we have in revenue there? Yes, we will. But I have looked at the cost of it, and I don't believe it will go over what I already have in the budget for this year for the meals program. So it would be my recommendation that the board vote to start a school breakfast program at the current Walker High School. I don't know if you have any more questions about the lunch. Can you give me the dollar amount of meals with the dollar eight from the dollar point? I have it at the dollar twenty-five. It's, it's, it's down wrong. This is wrong. Yeah. Okay. It's a dollar twenty-five. How many uh, people are made on this person? When I talked with when I talked with Melanie, they have a they have a probably about thirty five to forty percent of their students will partake, not necessarily regularly, but they, they do. And we have a lot of kids that show up in our cafeteria. It's one of the places that we allow kids to gather before school, and, and they're in there a lot. And I think I think they'll take advantage of it. We have a lot of kids come to school that don't eat breakfast. Number one, because they don't take the time to do it. And number two, maybe they don't have breakfast food at home. So this gives us the opportunity, and we can we can we can evaluate it and see you know, is it being used? Is it worth it? Are we losing money? And if we are, give it some the money. So I, I think it's important to try it. Uh, we had several teachers come to us believing that there are several kids that don't do very well here because they go to school. I'll make that motion. A second. I do have a question. Um, and I read this, I'm not sure how I agree with this, clarify for me. The Edgar County poverty level is such that there's some change in the state that everybody is still. It depends on the total number of uh, percentage of poverty within your school district. If your school district rises above, I think the number is 3%, your entire district becomes eligible for free meals. And I, I haven't looked into this, and maybe Connie or Lorraine might be able to tell me, Lorraine. Um, 95, I believe, would probably qualify for that. Um, the co-op and the uniform. How many lunches do you serve? We serve, it, it ranges between 190 and 220. Uh, last year we had 300 and about 40 kids that were, were with us, and we served anywhere between 185, which is the low end, and upwards around 225. Uh, when we have pizza, when we have a pizza, uh, pizza, pizza is a high day. You know, I'm glad you're offering more uh, quantity because a lot of kids don't go home until 10, 11 at night after sports, and there's not a lot of time to get food that's fresh from the bottom. I, would, I think if we if we serve more, we'll see more kids take our lunch as well because they they supplement it or they have their parents bring their own food because either they don't like what we're offering or it's not. Yeah. 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 Right. And that, that menu that she gave is just something from her mind based on what she knows the kids like based on a survey we took a couple years ago. We're going to survey our underclassmen in the first couple days of school and try to fix a menu that's a little bit more in line with what those kids expect for lunch. Any other discussion or questions? Made and seconded. Uh, yes. 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 Yes.
information for our coaches and for our student athletes as well as for our parents and we're going to send that home. Parents will have to sign off on it before their student athlete can get their equipment. But what remains is the uh, actual uh, policy for the board to adopt. And I put that in your packet as a uh, addendum and we would be, I would ask that the board waive the first reading and go ahead and, and pass this policy put into the district policy manual concerning uh, head injuries and concussions in the education of our student athletes, parents, and coaches. This is state legislative mandate, correct? Yes. Can I make that motion? I'll thank you. Motion is made second. Is there any discussion? Furnish? Yes. Comment? Yes. Davis? Yes. Yes, right? Yes. Um, I think I'll skip to number six. Um, and then we'll go back to number five. Uh, and this is no different than the 95 board meeting, but we do have a little bit different audience here. Uh, and I think it's been shared with everybody that's here, and the newspaper's not here. Uh, I just wanted to get it out there. The Capital Development Board had indicated that they had not finished surveys of all the eligible uh, construction projects and that they would not be releasing money until all those were done and forwarded and that they said in and this is their words that it would be sometime in fall that they would release the money if not before. So they're still working on those surveys and if you know somebody in the community asks you about that, that's that's the information that they're getting. Okay. Yes. You contact the region and see if you get this information? Sure. They don't have a lot of people contacting me and wanting to know what's going on. Just if I get it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now. I didn't make the paper for you. Yeah. I didn't make the paper for you. Yeah. All right. I'll wait. Do you have a calendar? I think it's pretty good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. 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 Yes.